so I actually became a U.S. citizen 10 years ago. A few days ago was the, my 10th anniversary as a U.S. citizen. Congratulations. And, oh, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. So it was it was very nice to see, you know, that memory popping up on Facebook and then remembering uh, everything that I had to go through, you know, to to um, get the, the citizenship. And my first um, big um, election was uh, that I participated in was 2012 uh, for the presidential ele election. So it, it was it was just like such a thrill to be able to do that. Um, I had been in the U.S. I think for already about like maybe eight, seven years already uh, without the right to vote, and and you know by doing it, I realized like how big of a privilege uh, and a duty it was for me now as a citizen, and it's something I do every time that I have to do it. And I do it with all my heart. And as you said, Mary Jane, in the beginning, you know, trying to be as informed as possible, uh, just so I'm aware of what I'm doing, right? Like it's a conscious act. And and so it's been amazing. And, you know, now doing Katie, when I started preparing for the role, uh, reading the libretto, I, you know, saw myself reflected in her in many ways, you know, starting uh, from the fact that she was an immigrant you know, being mm -hmm. here, coming to this country, also, you know, working and trying to open a way for myself to find my own place, but also my own voice. And after, you know, so many years realizing how much power my voice can have. You talked about being well informed and understanding, you know, everything that's on the ballot. And Mary Jane, I wonder if you can uh, reference some of the resources that you gave us earlier at the top of the show. Um, and then also talk about how maybe some families can participate in the in the voting process when they have young children. What what are some ways that those underage voters can also participate? Oh. This makes me so happy to get questions like this. Well, I know I waved the voter's guide in front of you a little uh, little while ago. There's also something called vote411.org. You just type that into your browser, you put in your zip code and bam, there will be a nonpartisan guide on all the different uh, races that you will be voting on. So one is digital, the other one is paper. But either way, those are some great resources. You can also go to harrisvotes.com and there's a sample ballot there. So there's a lot of different ways to really educate yourself. And then when it comes to uh, in, you know involving kids, nothing makes me happier than when I go to a polling location and I see parents bringing their children with them inside, and you know they watch their mom and mom or dad or guardian vote, and they're able to see it. That's really awesome. And that's a way to help them understand surely what they are doing tonight. Uh, they're learning about music as well as learning about democracy. It's, it's two beautiful things in one. So, you know, use your creative thoughts around it, different ways you can share with your kids because they are interested. They wanna know what their parents are up to and how they can participate. Oh yeah, they're interested. Ceci, I know you have a little one. What does she think of her her mom singing such roles and have you taken her to the polls too? She is totally uh, amazed. She was so happy when I, you know, she this time she stayed at home, but I said, uh, you know, I'm going to go and vote. I'm early mm -hmm. voting because I'm so excited about doing this, you know, this time and I'm so happy. And she was, yes, my mom went to vote. So she's, she's realizing, you know, that, like the pride and that it wasn't always this way that we were, you know, that we had the right to do it. And, and the fact that she knows that, um, I also tell her, you know, I'm an immigrant. I come from a different country. And so uh, for me, it's so special uh, that she's like realizing and learning all, the, all of this uh, process. It's beautiful. You know, we've been uh, talking about our show and we're getting, you know, people out to get the vote out. Uh, the pandemic has caused lots of worry around people getting out to do, you know, to this election. Can you just remind everybody watching where we can go, um, how does early voting, you know, where can we early vote? How is that different on the day of? And, uh, you know, what, what do you want to, what do you want to say to everybody to get that vote out there? <laughs> 
Well, as I said earlier, over a million people in Harris County, over seven million in Texas. I mean, I'm just I'm just really proud of of this city I live in. You know, we showed our resilience during Hurricane Harvey, and then again and again. And now people are going out and just letting their voices be heard in massive numbers, shattering records, going back to 2012 and uh, and even before. So that's really exciting. And yet. And yet, I want to be sure that we understand those who haven't voted yet, please don't assume that, okay, it's done, it's done. It's not done. It's not done until every single eligible voter can let their voice be heard. Don't give up that right. Don't give up that opportunity. And if you are kind of scared, you know, I've got to admit, I mean, it's it's been a very, uh, it's been a very difficult year for so many of us. Be aware that you go to polls, that our Harris County Clerk's Office has done everything that they can to make the polls safe. There's PPE, there's hand sanitizer, you've got your plexiglass, there, there are finger covers, all kinds of things to make sure that you don't touch surfaces and that you can vote safely. There is still voting um, by mail if you do uh, qualify, if you're over 65 or disabled. Um, there are some other qualifications, but you better get that, that ballot in the mail very soon so it gets to uh, Harris County Clerk's Office by November 3rd. There are various options. There are various ways to do it, but please do it. And if you want to know where... Um, you know, we have 122 locations now where people can go in person and vote. On November 3rd, there will be well over 800. So don't worry about the lines and don't worry about, you know, the, um, you know, the concerns about the pandemic. Let your voice be heard. Just be sure, you know, you bring your sanitizer, you're comfortable, but don't assume that we're done. We're not done until everybody has their chance to vote.